Hello everyone, it's Payam here from Niche Advice Financial Services. Hope you're well. Um, this is the first podcast that I'm doing and I thought I'd choose a very topical subject. One of the most common questions that I get asked is, how do I work out the best sort of lender to go to in terms of affordability? What do you guys take into account when you opt to um, provide a lender for me or give me advice around the lender? And what do I have to do um, to basically get the maximum mortgage possible? And some of the things that affect mortgages. Um, so we'll go, we'll run through a few examples. Um, affordability is the key issue when it comes to mortgages. Now, no matter what your circumstances are, um, you've got to take into account which lender is actually best suited to you. And that's what a professional broker does. Essentially, will uh, take down the information from yourselves. They will, a, a good broker will instantly know um, how uh, your income's derived and how other lenders will perceive that income because it's really important. Not all lenders view income uh, the same way. Um, a lot of them have got variations around how they would choose your take on your basic salary, uh, commissions, overtimes, um, uh, other benefits, uh, for example, pensions, um, car allowances, shift allowances, um, second jobs. So all of those things will have an impact on a client's affordability and every single lender will see things quite differently. So let's take an example, uh, a practical example. Um, one of the biggest lenders in the country, Halifax, for example, they tend to have a very straight rule around additional income. Um, if you have got bonuses, commission, um, other sources of income, they generally say, OK, we'll take 60 percent of it. That's it. So you've got your basic salary, but they will say, OK, we'll take 60 percent of the additional income as long as you can produce that. You, know, you are you are receiving that income. So uh, and that not, might not be ideal. It may work for some, but it might not be the right thing. There are other lenders that will say, OK, we'll take 100 percent of um, commission, for example, as long as you can show to me within the last three months, within the last six months, which really works. And understanding how a client's commission structure works is really, really important because, you know, some lenders will take an average of the last three months, some lenders will take the lowest figure, some lenders will take an average of the last six months, um, some lenders will insist that you must have received your commission every month within your pay slips. Year-to-date figures are actually uh, shown on the pay slip, so it's not just you know, put through three months worth of commissions and then you'll be okay. You know, lenders will do additional checks on that. So affordability, that's one element of affordability. Um, bonuses, for example, majority of the lenders out there will only take 50% of bonus. So a client's bonus, annual bonus, they'll only take 50% of it. And that's generally they would want to see and maybe a P60 from last year or two years to prove that you're getting that bonus on a regular basis. Um, there are other lenders, for example, Barclays is one. They will take 100% of that bonus um, as long as you've been paid that for the last two years. Granted, they will take an average of the last two years bonuses. So that's important, but they'll take 100%. However, they have there are other issues around that. So I'll give you an example. You may have a client who's on £20,000 basic salary and receives £40,000 worth of uh, bonuses. Um, now, what a lot of the lenders will do, um, they will cap that bonus amount to their basic salary. So if you're receiving £20,000 basic salary, they'll cap your bonus to £20,000. So, uh, which, and, and they're not going to use the addition of £20,000 that you've been receiving. So, if that's the case, then, uh, you know, the broker will identify um, the need for you to go to a lender that does not have that cap in place. So that's just another element of affordability. Now, when it comes to income multiples, you know, the olden days used to be, you know, four times your salary, five times your salary. And those rules still exist. But a lot of the lenders tend to work on an affordability model, which also looks into account other things. Um, Pension contributions for one. Some lenders will take into account pension contributions as a commitment. So if your, you know, 200,000, 200 pounds a month is going out of your bank every month on your payslip, uh, pension contributions, some lenders will say, well, actually, we'll see that almost as a commitment, almost as a loan, and we'll deduct that. Other lenders will say, well, no, actually, that's actually a good thing that they are um, saving. We will discount that from the affordability models because later on in life, that could be a benefit. So, um, and that's really important, especially for civil servants, people that work in the NHS, doctors, um, they've got very high pension contributions. So understanding how a lender will treat pension contributions 
is key to getting the best affordability out of um, you know out of all the lenders out of the the, the, the models that they use. Um, another really important thing is is not just what's going what's coming in, it's what's going out. So you've got lenders um, that treat debt in a different way. So if you've got an existing car purchase, for example, uh, maybe some furniture, um, how they will treat that level of debt or that monthly commitment um, is, is, you know, it's huge between different lenders. Some lenders will absolutely crucify their affordability models. Others are actually got good to- tolerances. So headline sort of rates of, you know, you can get, you know, 1% interest rate. Uh, that's all great. But, you know, affordability is a key. How they treat debt, how they treat your overall income profile, how they treat your dependent children, maybe, how they treat your secondary income, whether it's benefit income, whether it's commission, whether it's uh, discussion income, whether it's child maintenance, um, you know, all of those things will have an impact on affordability. And really, a good broker will be able to identify what lender, what lenders' models are, and also how you can navigate around um, the, their, their sort of affordability rules, and obviously make sure that they fit those affordability rules before you go to full application. Because the last thing you want to do is waste your time going for a full application and getting knocked back because of the lenders' rules um, do not comply to your uh, mortgage application. Um, so this session is really around affordability. There is so much more around affordability. Um, there are so many rules that you've got to abide by. And there are some really, really good, interesting products out there now. We've got a number of lenders that will go beyond five and a half times income, for example, on certain uh, clients. Um, you've also got um, lenders that are very good on tolerances. You've got lenders that will take four people's incomes. Um, on an application so you know a family can buy together and obviously pull together and they'll use 100% of that income where historically they may have taken you know a percentage of the third and fourth applicants so there are models whereby there are type of guarantee type mortgages whereby maybe parents can help Parents can help their children buy a property, but can uh, essentially not go on, on go on the land registry titles to save on the additional stamp duty. There are lots and lots of innovative ideas that are coming out of lenders right now, and it's forever evolving. And really, a task of someone like Niche Advice is to speak to those lenders uh, and speak to our clients and, and, and come come back with. Uh, solutions, you know, contractor type mortgages, self-employed mortgages, all of those things are um, evolving on a daily basis almost. Um, lending into retirement, uh, interest only type of mortgages, all of them will have an affordability uh, criteria behind it. Um, so I hope this was useful. Um, one more very important thing, um, as part of GDPR, Um, we've got to get your consent to be able to send you these updates. So in my email, uh, there will be a consent button. So if you can be kind enough to just literally um, press that button so you can give us consent, so I can start sending you these useful sort of tips around affordability. And when the time is right, you can obviously get in touch with us. And if you want us to review your finance needs, then we'll be more than happy to do so. Thank you so much for joining me in this first session, and hopefully there will be many more.